Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark and this is an iMac Pro. Oh, and Steve, there he is. We brought our iMac Pro to the desktop here because I'm going to show a cool plugin that needs the maximum processing horsepower of this awesome iMac Pro. All right, great. What do we <laughs> like, see me, here? Let me turn this. There we go. How's that, Travis? Good? All right. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about a plugin that works great on 360 footage. Now, I know everyone out there doesn't shoot 360, but if you do shoot 360, this plugin will do some really interesting effects to it. What's it called? This is called Revolve 360 by Sugar FX. Sugar FX, okay, and delivered through FX Factory. Delivered through FX Factory, it's about 50 bucks, but it's a great plugin you can do some really great stuff with. Well, let's see. Okay, so here I am in Final Cut Pro 10. And uh, I got this clip that I shot with my GoPro Fusion, and I was at Disneyland, and the stormtrooper, and he's like in my face. It's kind of funny. Um, and I placed this 360 clip. You know, it's got it's flat. It's equal rectangular. You can see it's all you know right. stretched and flat. I should point out something. If, in order for this plugin to work, you're going to need to make sure before you put it in your timeline, you're going to make sure that uh, your 360 mode is set to none. You do not want this set to equirectangular or fish eye or anything. Which it would be by default. When you import it, it's tagged and will be, will be tagged as equirectangular. It will be tagged yeah. and, and, and that's what you want. When you put a timeline, you want it to function as a 360 clip. But you want to turn that off before you put it into the timeline. Okay. And once it's in the timeline, it's, it appears like, like this, just, just flat. Yeah. Okay. Right, so now we're ready to apply the plugin itself. Let me open the effects browser, and there it is under 360 Sugar Effects, Revolve 360. I'm just going to drop that right on the clip. So instantly we see it does some really cool stuff to the clip. I'm going to open the inspector, so you can see there's a bunch of controls in here. And you first start by applying what's called a basic preset. In other words, how the image will be mapped to a sphere. Mm -hmm. right? There's all these choices here. I, I'm just going to go down to the one that's most common. We'll just do the tiny planet. Tiny little planet. And there's yeah, your fantastic. tiny planet. Then so instantly you have this tiny planet. <laughs> it's kind of cool. I feel like your head gets so big. Oh, I right know. <laughs> All right. So when working with a plugin, understand that there are two basic display modes: basic and automatic. We're going to show both. The basic gives you essentially three separate um, panes. You have the projection type that allows you to flip the image and flop the image, and you know do a front or back projection, play with the resolution. Under the settings pane, you can play with things that you would typically be familiar with if you use 360 footage in yeah, Final Cut Pro. You can, you can tilt, you can, um, you, can, uh, pan, you can pan the image around, and you can roll it. And the typical things you can do. Fish Those are things you would normally do with a 360 clip exactly. in, in, within, within Final Cut's tool set. Exactly. Yeah. And special framing is really interesting because you can consider this area as a virtual camera. So like you can dolly in and out to the image. You can uh, reframe horizontal, reframe vertically, uh, scale. Uh, there's a couple of things. So you think of it like, like a camera, it'll make much more sense to you when you're manipulating right. it. So if you really didn't shoot with the camera oriented correctly or in the right place, you have full control over adjusting the shot right. afterwards. And all of these properties can be keyframed. We're gonna do a simple move where we start with a tiny planet and then go flat. Okay. Okay. So let's set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and move my playhead to the beginning of the timeline. And I'm going to set keyframes for settings. I'm going to just control click in here and choose add. Boom. Keyframes for all of these tilt pan roll effects here. And then I'll control click and choose add for special framing. So I have keyframes set up at the very for beginning for everything. Yeah. Now, what I want to do is move to a frame where I want the image to kind of spread out and get flattened. So I like this stormtroopers kind of pointing right at the camera there. So I'm going to move yeah. my player just before he lifts his hand right, right there. And, and instead of going and, and changing the settings back to the defaults, there's an easy way to bring things back to the default. Go back up here to basic preset and choose default. So it'll keep those keyframes, even though you switched the preset, it'll remember those keyframes. That's right. Nice. Exactly. So if nice. I, if I uh, play through this or scrub through it, you can see we starting a tiny planet and then over time it flattens out. And it opens up. It opens yeah. up just before he it flattens out. Then of course he points at the camera. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, wow. I'm going to uh, mess with the timing a little bit. It's a little bit too slow. So with my play had parked over the clip. I'm going to hit control V and notice you have the keyframe editor here for right. that revolve effect. I'm just going to go ahead and grab these keyframes and move them closer, like, like, like there, make it happen faster. 
Now I'll play this back. <laughs> nice. So you're actually directing in post while you're doing this. You're deciding where the camera looks and how the, what it looks at afterwards rather than doing it um, when you shoot because you shot everything. Right. In fact, let's, let's take your um, comment, take it a bit further, but actually panning the camera. Okay. okay so, so I respond to the stormtrooper somewhere over here. Activity here. No. No. I say no, no. So I, I'm going to go ahead and move my playhead right there where I want to uh, set a keyframe. And in the settings, I'm going to go ahead and set a keyframe for pan right there. And then move the playhead a little bit later and set another. Actually, I don't need to set a keyframe. Key I just need to change, it, now. Just change yeah. it over. And there I am. So let's play this. No, no. I think it's still, <laughs> it's great. I might move these a little bit earlier just to see. There That's we go. really so, great. Activity here. No, no. That's great. So you, you, are, you are directing the camera in post. That's right. You're, yep. So it's great. We're using a 360 uh, image and we're using it in a 2D timeline and then just manipulating yeah. like a camera. That's great. Very, very cool. All right. Now let's look at the automatic settings. I set a bunch of keyframes that there's another way to use this app that's pretty powerful. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the animation editor, control B, and I'm going to reset the entire effect uh, by clicking here, reset everything. All right. So what I'm going to do is move the play back to the beginning and notice here it says display basic. This yeah, time so I'm going to choose automatic, automatic animation. Uh -huh. Okay. As soon as you do that, you're going to have an additional option here for animation presets. Okay. So before, before you do that, you still need to choose a basic mapping for the sphere. Okay, so we looked okay. at that earlier. I'm going to choose Miniature World this time. Okay, so Miniature World is not quite as small as uh, Tiny Little Planet. Right, it's not quite as small. So Miniature World. And then under Animation Presets, I'm going to choose, uh, let's see here, Down to Earth. Okay, so... So Whoa, you get a whole so, visual so interface. There's a whole interface that happens now, and I'll talk about those in a moment. But let's just play this, just so you can see that without any keyframes, yeah. I immediately get an animation um, for my image. So you can see there, it's, it's moving. Yeah, down to there. earth. It's like you're moving down into the shot. It's exactly wow. right. That's really cool. It's really great. Now, what are we looking at here? Okay, so first thing is, notice I move my playhead. I move my playhead, there's a playhead on the interface itself. Yeah. So that playhead determines kind of like where you are in the clip. So the white bars are the entire clip. These red bars are when the various parameters kick in. Now, what parameters are we talking about? Oh, so each color represents a different animated parameter. That's right. And if you go with the inspector, you'll notice here that, uh, see, the, the red bar oh, is nice. panning. The They're green, color coded there. The green bar is the tilting and then the, let's see we've got purple we have a fisheye effect and a zoom effect so you can see uh how how you manipulate this um, without all the distractions of every effect being applied i'm going to go ahead and turn off zoom i'm going to turn off fisheye and i'm going to go ahead and turn off tilt axis i just want to work with the, with the panning, panning right now so okay. right now the only thing you're seeing is a panning and it doesn't really happen until about right a third there. into the clip that's right. when it starts but maybe i want the panning to start a little earlier okay so maybe i want it to start here or maybe at the beginning yeah. that's where you have this uh, percent time slider let's notice it started 25 percent in so in, yeah. i'm just going to say no i really want it i'm moving it here i want to say maybe i want to start that very right beginning, beginning right so it makes far. me want to drag right on the viewer to yeah well you can't you got to do that but in the still inspector. It's, it's very um intuitive it gives you a lot of good that visual feedback is great so right now it's notice the panning's happening from the beginning of the clip and it's going all the way through to half of the clip, 50% of the clip. How do I know that? Because it, it right there says that the, the clip, it says right there that the effect duration is 50% of the clip. And then visually right. that's what we're seeing here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn on the tilt axis. And let's see here, maybe I want that to have the tilt axis to start about right here. So I move my playhead, that's maybe about right there. And the percentage of time slider, I just drag this until it lines up with the playhead. Maybe I want that to go to, maybe I want that fairly lining up with the end of the, the panning. And so now I just drag the duration slider. So you can have each of these uh, parameters be triggered basically by what you're seeing in the video. That's right. And you have this great visual reference point with the playhead and the, and the colored bars. That's really nice. Yeah, so here I am to get the, to get the panning going and then now the tilt. And the tilt. Yeah, and there it tilts and tilts there and I'm responding. Yeah, and then I'll go ahead and turn back on uh, the fisheye and the zoom, just um, see what that 
looks like. I think it looks better. I'm not as far away. And uh, you see the fisheye and zoom doesn't actually happen until about 25% in, like right about there. It's like fisheye and zoom starts happening. It's tilting. And then there's my response. Okay, and then eventually see the stormtrooper walk away. So really great plug-in. That's a lot of fun. So even if you don't shoot 360 video, you can use 360 video in your 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 flat, your 2D pro, excuse me, your 1080 or your 4K projects right. and do some pretty amazing camera moves. Yeah, and I love this as another way of delivering 360 in a in a like you say a flat environment or a traditional type yeah. of way. And you might think, oh, 360 video, there's nothing to edit, but there's a lot of editing, just very different type of editing, yeah. and it's it's more directing in a way. Well, yeah, shoot first, direct later. Yeah, that's really yeah. the idea. But uh, it's really a great, great, great plugin. Fifty cool. bucks uh, nice. on Effect Factory. Nice, nice. Steve, thank you. Mm-hmm. Hope you guys enjoy that as much as I did. Really cool plugin. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week here on MacBreak Studio.